Nuclear fusion is the most promising source of energy in the entire universe, from massive stars throughout space down to tiny reactors here on Earth. When it comes to generating power and energy, physics gives us plenty of options. With simple mechanics, the energy of an object's motion is put to work. Using weights under the influence of gravity, flowing water, or moving air to turn a wheel or a turbine. That motion is then used to generate electrical energy or other forms of power. There are chemical reactions as well, reliant on electron transmissions and how atoms and molecules are bound together. Where some sort of fuel is metabolized or combusted to generate energy. And that energy is then harnessed and similarly put to work. And finally, there are nuclear reactions, where the bonds between neutrons and protons inside an atomic nucleus are either broken apart or forged together to release energy, and then that energy is put to work. Nuclear Energy and Fusion Nuclear power is unique. Compared to all chemical reactions, it is literally hundreds of thousands to millions of times more efficient. In terms of the fraction of mass converted into energy, it's a strange idea to consider that a tiny building block of matter, the atomic nucleus, holds the greatest potential for energy release. And yet, it's true. While electron transitions in atoms or molecules typically release energy on the order of one electron volt, nuclear transitions between different configurations release energies a million times as great, on the order of one mega electron volt. Fusion offers the potential of liberating even more energy than fission does. It occurs in all stars with core temperatures of more than 4 million K and is the primary reaction powering our sun. When you create a fusion bomb, its energy yield is far more than any fission bomb. The former is usually measured in megatons, while the latter is measured only in kilotons. In principle, if we can control a nuclear fusion reaction with the same efficiency that we can presently control fission reactions, extracting energy at whatever rates we choose, it will stand to replace all other forms of energy generation as the dominant source of power on planet Earth. However, there's a catch. The roadblocks. The difficulty of achieving fusion power. In the sun and stars, high temperatures and powerful gravitational forces naturally prepare a fusion environment. But here on our planet, we face the challenge of heating up nuclear fuel and have limitations to begin a self-sustaining ignition. Just think about trying to hold the plasma, a mixture of gaseous deuterium, tritium ions, and atoms, and the helium fusion product. At millions of degrees Celsius, scientists couldn't find materials that could withstand these temperatures. Therefore, scientists try to keep the plasma in a magnetic field provided by superconducting magnets around the fusion vessel chamber. This method is tough to achieve compared to nuclear fission. Availability Recently, Canadian nuclear laboratories delivered five steel drums lined with cork to absorb shocks to the joint European Taurus JET a large fusion reactor in the United Kingdom. Inside each drum was a steel cylinder the size of a Coke can, holding a wisp of hydrogen gas, just 10 grams of it, or the weight of a couple of sheets of paper. This wasn't ordinary hydrogen, but it's rare radioactive isotope tritium, in which two neutrons and a proton cling together in the nucleus. At $30,000 per gram, it's almost as precious as a diamond. Fusion advocates often boast that the fuel for their reactors will be cheap and plentiful. This is certainly true for deuterium. Roughly one in every 5,000 hydrogen atoms in the ocean is deuterium, and it sells for about $13 per gram. But tritium, with a half-life of 12.3 years, exists naturally only in trace amounts in the upper atmosphere. The product of cosmic ray bombardment, nuclear reactors also produce tiny amounts, but few harvest them. Sustainability Although fusion does not generate long-lived radioactive products and the unburned gases can be treated on site, there would be a short to medium-term radioactive waste problem due to the activation of these structural materials. Some component materials will become radioactive during the lifetime of a reactor due to the bombardment with high-energy neutrons and will eventually become radioactive waste. The volume of such waste would be similar to the corresponding volumes from fission reactors. There are also other concerns, principally regarding the possible release of tritium into the environment. It is radioactive and very difficult to contain since it can penetrate concrete, rubber, and some grades of steel. As an isotope of hydrogen, it is easily incorporated into water, making the water itself weakly radioactive, with a half-life of about 12.3 years. The presence of tritium remains a threat to health for about 125 years after it's created, as a gas goes or in water, if at high levels. 
It can be inhaled, absorbed through the skin, or ingested. Inhaled tritium spreads throughout the soft tissues, and tritiated water mixes quickly with all of the water in the body. Although there is only a small inventory of tritium in a fusion reactor, a few grams, each could conceivably release significant quantities of tritium during operation through routine leaks. Assuming the best containment systems, an accident could release even more. This is one reason why long-term hopes are for the deuterium-deuterium fusion process dispensing with tritium. Let's analyze the problem. First off, it isn't a trivial matter to create a nuclear fusion reaction. As long as you restrict yourself to working with materials like hydrogen, deuterium, helium-3, and other stable light elements and isotopes, it requires tremendous temperatures and energy to get a nuclear fusion reaction to occur at all. Controlling and sustaining these environments is no easy task, and it requires tremendous energy even at the outset to create the conditions necessary for fusion. And secondly, you can't simply approach this with the goal of creating more energy through fusion. Then you put into the system to get the reaction going. That's what's known as a bomb. Instead, what you need to do is to produce energy at a slow enough rate that you can cause it to produce useful quantities of power, energy over time. Reaching the vaunted break-even point requires both producing more energy from your reactions than you put into the system to initiate those reactions, and also extracting that energy and putting it to use. How to solve these problems? So far, these problems remain unsolved in tandem, but there are two main approaches researchers are taking as they attempt to revolutionize humanity's relationship with energy. Magnetic Confinement Fusion Nuclear fusion fuel, remember, isn't merely atoms, but the atomic nuclei at the cores of atoms. One approach to nuclear fusion is to fully ionize atoms, stripping their electrons away, until only the atomic nuclei remain. By creating this superheated plasma of atomic nuclei that can fuse together, the idea is then to bring those nuclei together, overcoming the electrically repulsive force between them to initiate fusion reactions. Inertial Confinement Fusion Instead of messing around with magnetic fields, why not just try the brute force approach? That's what inertial confinement fusion attempts to do, by taking a pellet of material that can be fused, a series of high-powered lasers on all sides are fired at the target pellet, rapidly increasing its temperature and density until a nuclear fusion reaction can be triggered, although it requires storing up a tremendous amount of energy for the laser shot that compresses the pellet, the fusion reaction generated may release even more energy, allowing us to someday surpass the break-even point. While fusion power clearly has much more to offer when the technology is fully developed, the obstacles associated with it also need to be addressed, if it is to become a widely used future energy source. Thank you for watching this video, and make sure to power up that subscribe button. Although there are a lot of obstacles with nuclear fusion, there is great news. Recently, China made a discovery on the moon that could solve a major challenge of nuclear fusion. Click on the video on the right to find out what they discovered or watch our latest video on the left. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and push that nuclear subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. We also appreciate your feedback, so let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. See you in the next video.